All right. I think we are live. 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 Good. Everybody hear me alright? 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 Good. There's a delay with the. Uh, there's a delay. Hmm. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. How about now? Yeah, it was weird. I was coming through the phone somehow. All good? Sweet. All right. So, thanks everybody for joining. Looks like we already got some viewers. What's up, Neil, Lenny? Cool. All right. So, we're going to be tying a couple sulfur dry flies tonight. The first one, make sure the fly's in focus here. That's the first one we're going to be doing. Uh, it's called a Puff Daddy. It's a pretty straightforward pattern. Um, it's been gaining a little bit of popularity. There's been a few videos posted online of it, but pretty big fan of this one. It's real simple, like real sparse. Um, so if you've had some fish that, you know, if you're getting refusals on uh, like your standard dry fly patterns, like parachutes or Catskill style patterns, this might be a good one to try. Um, because it could be a crippled mayfly, it could be, you know, spinner. It tends to lay on its side a little bit when you fish it. And more in the film, and less, uh, like, sitting on top of the water. Cool. And then the second one we're going to do is this guy. So that is a half-and-half half emerger. You could call it a transitional emerger, too. It's another name for it. Um, that's going to be your typical, like, sitting halfway in the water, emerger pattern. Um, so this one's a little bit more complicated. We're going to do the, the Puff Daddy first. Just jump right into that guy. What's up, Mark? Dave? Chris is watching. Cool. So... All right, so the hook we're gonna use for the Puff Daddy is a TMC 100. Let's see. Hopefully the glare is not too bad. So, straight shank, um, fine wire dry fly hook. And then the thread is gonna be UTC 70. This is cream. Uh, you can also use ADOT, uh, Light Cahill, Vivas has another light KL thread that I've used uh, in the 12-watt size that works really well. Um, but I'm just a fan of the UTC stuff in the, uh, the smaller dries. Cool. So just jump into this. I'm just going to get the thread started here. Second material ready. Yes, that is a sip of sunshine. 
I'm a big fan of that beer. Let me slide the fly a little bit closer here. Yeah, that looks better. Cool. So I'm going to cover the rest of this hook shank and thread. The next material we're going to use our turkey bias, and that's just sulfur yellow. It's a Wapsi product. Um, Hairline has their version of the turkey bite quills as well, but the color of this one is just about perfect for uh, for sulfurs. So, I'm going to cut one of these off. So I'll explain real quick, um, just in case nobody's ever used a turkey bite before. There's two different ways to wrap these, and you'll get a different look depending on which way you wrap them. Turkey versus goose. Um, turkey's longer and wider, and I usually have better luck wrapping bodies with it myself especially on a fly this size. Uh, the goose, if I had some handy, I would show you. The goose biots are a lot shorter. Uh, they're perfect for like prince nymphs, like putting uh, tails tails in or the, uh, the wing buds on the prince nymph. But uh, I tend to like the turkey for this. Just it looks a little bit better. I like the ridges and, and the transparency of it. It just looks really buggy after you're done. Um, so tying this in. So every feather has a curve to it, which might be a little hard to see. You can see how the feather is kind of pointing this way. And there's going to be a ridge on this feather. So depending on which way you tie it, you're going to get a segmented look or you can tie it in the other way and it's going to look more flat and streamlined, almost like a thread body. But I'm going to do this one uh, with the ridges up, which I had one started there. I don't know if you could see. Let's see. You can see how the fly has a, a segmented look to it, the way we're going to tie that in. So usually if I tie this in with the curve facing upwards on the fly, work my way back a little bit on the hook and you have to be kind of careful with the bias they are a little fragile if you put too much pressure on them when you're tying them in like if you crank on that bias at the the back you can split it and then it ends up breaking on your your first wrap So they take some getting used to, but after after a few flies, they're uh, they're pretty easy. Cool. So I'm gonna build up a little bit of a taper here. This thread, and I'm only working probably about three quarters up the fly. So I'm gonna leave that front half open because um, that's where I'm gonna put the CDC and the dubbing. So I want to leave a little gap here. Yes, yeah, you could use a quill body for this as well. That would look just fine. Um, and they make quills dyed in a bunch of different colors. Uh, same thing with the turkey bites. So the, the quills look pretty cool. They're, uh, I use them on a lot of nymph patterns, but for some reason I tend to use the turkey on uh, dries. That's just personal preference. Cool. So since I have a, uh, a rotary vise here, just put a little half hitch in so I can take advantage of it. And so I'm just going to wrap this 
because the turkey bites are pretty wide, they're gonna overlap each other by about half. And you just work your way up the hook. The tricky part is usually tying them off. So sorry if my fingers are in the way here. Get that. Cool. So, get rid of this tag. And then I'm just gonna wrap over the front of that by it. Cool. So, uh, at this point you could use uh, some lacquer type head cement on this by it just to protect it because they're a little fragile. Um, you know, you catch a few fish on these. If you don't put anything on them, they can start to break on you. Like trout's teeth get in there and uh, just split them pretty easy. So what I'm going to do, this is a little faster than using the lacquer. This is a uh, solar res bone dry. So this is just a UV resin. It's super, super thin. And I'm just gonna put a little bit on here. And what I usually do is put some on and then take off the excess with my fingers like that. So I don't ruin the look of the fly. And then just hit that with the uh, UV light. straggler here all right so now we're gonna use a little bit of dubbing here cool. so this is East Coast dubbing this is a product we sell uh, and sulfur yellow. Let's see. I'm actually going to use this on both flies, so I'm going to keep that in front of me. And the other thing about um, dubbing, which I can mention quick, especially with dry flies, uh, I don't really want to use a lot of it. So you can see the amount I pulled out, I'm probably gonna use half of that. So maybe only that much. Like really, really sparse here. Um, this is basically just to fill the gap uh, between the, the buy it and the CDC that we're gonna put in. And the other thing about dubbing I'm not using any dubbing wax on this one. There's, you know, sub dubbings are more coarse and hard to work with, but this stuff's pretty easy to use. So I don't really need to put any wax on this thread. Um, I can basically just keep it really sparse. And the other thing about not using wax, I'm able to slide it around and move it pretty easy. Uh, and I'm always twisting one way with it. You don't want to try and dub and go back and forth with your fingers because um, it'll just, instead of wrapping around the thread, it'll just keep wrapping and wrapping and it'll just create like a dog leg when you, uh, you try and wrap it onto the hook. So, get this out of the way. So this will be the thorax. But I still want to leave, let's see, I basically created like just a little ball there, um, the thorax, but I left a little bit of space at the front there because I'm going to tie in some CDC. What size hook do you usually fish this? Uh, sulfurs, at least the ones I see. 16 is probably the most common, but I've 
certain rivers get them down to size 20. Um, and I've seen them as big as like almost a 12, but usually 14, 16 is common. But it really depends. Like some of the tailwaters in the East Coast that get them for months, uh, they tend to get smaller and smaller as the season goes. And then by the end of the summer, they're almost a size 20. So this just happens to be a size 14 hook just for the video. So it's a, it's a little bit easier to see. And I forgot to mention, this is, let's see if this shows up, Trout Hunter CDC. This is a bulk bag of Light Done. That's a really good color. Um, pretty versatile. Like, I can use this on blowing olives, sulfurs, use it on Hendrickson's too if I wanted to. Let's see, so... The other thing, which I can mention quick, about picking a good CDC feather for this, because not all these are going to be useful. You know, in these bulk bags, they're, the Trout Hunter CDC is really good, but I try to pick one that is going to be a good feather. So like this one, that feather is pretty short and these fibers aren't really long enough to do what I want to do with this because uh, I'm going to palmer this like hackle so I'd probably pitch that one or just throw it back in the bag and probably end up using it on a smaller dry fly and then this one same thing this feather's not bad but there's breaks in it so there's a lot of broken stuff right there so I wouldn't be able to use that one either. But this, that's about the feather you want. Like, if you look wide and full, like really clean looking feather. So that's usually what I'm trying to pick through uh, when I'm tying flies like this. So, like I said, I'm going to tie this in by the tip. So I'm going to grab the very end and then start pulling some of these fibers back. I don't want to pull it so hard that I start ripping the uh, fibers off, but just stroke them back so you get them standing up straight. So, got that feather tied in. So I'm gonna wrap this the same way you wrap a soft hackle or a uh, just a standard dry fly hackle. But every time, every wrap I do, I'm gonna try and pull these back so they meet each other. So I could probably get three or four wraps out of this if I'm careful. The reason I'm pulling them back every time is because I'm trying not to trap too many of these and have some facing forward and some facing backwards. I'll probably get sneak one more in here. So you saw when I tied this off. Put a few wraps behind that hackle and then I put a couple wraps just to lock it in in front of that stem. So right behind, right between the eye and the stem, a couple thread wraps just to lock that in a little bit better. Just cut that off.
So, almost done. So this is a pretty quick fly. If you get the hang of it, you can crank these out pretty easy. I'm just cleaning up some of the uh, stragglers I had here in that CDC. Sometimes it helps to, to, to wrap over the stem of the CDC a little bit just to protect it. And then at this point, you just do a whip finish. Mm, only one shank on this from Brandon. And that shank happens to have a hook on it. <laughs> Amy needs me to start over. What step are you at, Amy? This is a Renzetti Traveler. So the step of starting the thread on the hook, it sounds like I need to start. <laughs> so, uh, the other thing, this is super long right now. So, what you can do, I don't love cutting CDC. You could just cut these to length, but I don't love the look of it. So what I usually do, just hold the the wraps of the CDC hackle, and then you just take your fingernail and break these to the length you want. So I don't like them crazy long. But usually something like that looks a little bit more normal to me. but it's a cool fly. It's really versatile. Um, you know, basically you fish it like a wet fly if you wanted to. You don't even need to put float on it. Fish it right under the surface. Uh, if you hit it with desiccant powder, it'll float really well, but it's, it's a low riding dry fly, so it sits right in the film. Um, it's good when there's tons and tons of bugs and there's a lot of crippled mayflies and uh, like, knock down mayflies that like one's laying on their side uh, like really prolific hatches sometimes trout tend to look for stuff like that and not necessarily the the mayfly duns that are just sitting upright and perfect they're looking for all the the other stuff in the the surface <laughs> why didn't i cut the cdc uh you could if you wanted to I know a lot of people that would just cut that. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Brendan. One of these days I'll get Brendan trout fishing. Hopefully soon. Yeah, you, I'm looking at some of the other questions. You could use a light done soft tackle. Um, it just wouldn't float as well if you were trying to fish it as a dry fly. Uh, the fly would definitely still fish, but because of CDC, it just has its natural flotation to it. You, uh, you can fish it either way, so it's a little bit more versatile, but you could totally just tie it with a... a a light done soft tackle and, and fish it more like a, a wet fly and would definitely work. <laughs> cool. So that is the puff daddy. So not too tough. Pretty, pretty straightforward fly. Once you get the hang of working with turkey bites, um, 
you can crank those out pretty fast. Now we're going to do the half and half. So this one is getting a 2487 from Tamco. Um, that's a 14, but like I said, same as the other fly. Um, tie these down to a 20 at times, but most streams uh, that I fish, it's pretty much 14 to 18. That's gonna be the range you need them. Um, but there is a few places that you might see like really tiny sulfurs. Uh, like. Like the, the Puff Daddy, for example, originally was tied to fish the South Holston because um, they get sulfurs for months and months and they just get really, really small. Same thing with the West Branch of the Delaware. Um, they can get tiny, but usually you got them, if you get them in 14, 16, 18, you're pretty much covered. Jake, do smallmouth eat them? I bet they do. Because I see sulfurs on a lot of smallmouth floats. <laughs> yes, that is a good point. Um, the Puff Daddy, you could definitely fish as a blue winged olive pattern. You just switch the color. They're, it tie the almost the same wing color and just switch the 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 bite to a. BW oak color and you're good. Or like Western uh, PMDs as well. You do the same thing. Yes, a yellow boogle bug is much easier to test catch bass with. All right. So, same color thread, UTC 70 in the uh, cream color. Gonna cover the back of the hook shank. Try not to break my thread here. Might have just jinxed myself. Yes, let me just answer that question before I can get to it. The, um, the CDC puffs are good for the wings on um, really small flies. So they're good to have, but you can't palm or anything with them. They're just not uh, small enough. That's the only problem. So this fly is kind of cool. Basically, the back half of this fly, um, we're just tying a pheasant tail nymph. There's really not much different, which is why I call it a half and half. That is a good point, Brendan. But nobody has any secret spots. So, tail material. A uh, couple options here. Sparkle Merge Yarn from Hairline in brown, works super well. Or uh, the other one I have here is Zelon. So either one are great to have and you can see like they're almost identical. Not a huge difference between the two. Let's see. So this stuff comes in just a big clump. Sometimes you can use a bodkin or something to separate this stuff. The, the thickness you want, I, I basically want the, the tail on this to be maybe a little bit thinner than the body is. And it's going to be just pheasant tail, so, you know, I don't want it super thick. Because it's going to get stuck in the surface. I, I want this part of the fly to sit underneath the film or right in it. So, I don't want this too thick. 
and this material, I don't mind tying it in long because it's a synthetic, so I don't mind just uh, cutting it at the end. Okay. Tied in the tail at the top of the hook so I don't get a bump of thread if I if you start the tail back here, you're gonna end up with this this hump. The, no matter what you do, if uh, when you wrap the pheasant tail, it's just not gonna be tapered correctly. So just wrapping the sparkle merger yarn. Definitely wanna go down the bend, probably about that far, because the fly is gonna sit in the water like that. So uh, now we're gonna tie in the rib, which is, let's see if we can see this. That's extra small copper wire from UTC. You could probably use small and get away with it, but just because it's a dry fly, I'm trying to keep the weight down. Uh, I tend to use extra small for the dries. Um, Similar to like tying, tying an Elkhair Caddis or something, you just want to use the thinnest wire you can. It's mostly just there to protect the pheasant tail. Cool. And then just good old fashioned pheasant tail. I cut probably six to eight fibers off that stem. And usually I'll just cut the ends off, the tips of the feathers, I mean, not the ends. And same thing I mentioned before, I'm trying to not build up like a bump of thread here. So I tied in the pheasant tail right where I've been tying in all, all the materials up top. So usually right at the peak of this hook, that's where my thorax is gonna start. Um, so I just have to get my pheasant tail to about the midpoint. Um, So I'm gonna leave my thread hanging there. That'll at least tell me where I need to stop wrapping the pheasant tail. All right. So the other thing I'm gonna do is counter wrap this pheasant tail. So that means I'm gonna wrap it the opposite direction uh, of the rest of the materials. I'll explain why in a second after I do that. So I'll put a half hitch here just to keep this thread from moving around. So you don't need to go any further than that. You pretty much right around the middle of the hook. And then. Almost knocked over the tripod. That was a good save. Yeah, 
Pheasant tail is easy to break. So now, the same direction I've been wrapping the thread. So clockwise, if you were looking at the eye of the hook. The reason why the pheasant tail is wrapped backwards is uh, the wire is easier to tie off when it's wrapped with the thread because you're actually tightening it as you tie it off. Whereas if you wrap the pheasant tail normally and then counter wrap the wire, when you try and when you try and tighten that wire down, you're actually f like loosening it and it fights itself. Um, I've had better luck and just more durable pheasant tails if I uh, wrap the pheasant tail backwards and then wrap the wire normally. So. Cool. Just gotta find my hackle. So just I'm gonna tie the wing in now, it's the next step. So there's a couple options for the wing of this fly. I'll show you the first one. I either tend to use uh, polypropylene yarn. So it's this stuff right here. This is a Wopsy product. Um, same thing, just good synthetic. It sheds water. Um, it takes floating really well, so it's not like a lot of natural materials that get soggy after a while. The uh, polypropylene, just a few false casts usually, and it sheds water and just keeps floating. So it's a really good wing material. <laughs> Jake says, you are my hero. Thank you, Jake. Yeah, so Mike brings up a good point. Uh, the other option are EP trigger point fibers. Um, I tend to use the color Quicksilver for sulfurs because it's basically like a light dun. But if you look, these two are pretty similar. There's not a huge difference. Uh, so either one will work, whatever you can get a hold of. So, so when I tie this wing in, I'm gonna it's gonna be doubled over. So basically tied in like a spinner wing and then I'm gonna prop them up. So I'm gonna figure eight first. And just give it a couple of good figure eight wraps and pull on it a little bit just to make sure we're tight. Just like that. Make sure everybody can see that. And then, I'm gonna give it a couple wraps, like parachute style, so I'm gonna go around the whole wing. Because I'm, I'm not trying to tie a spinner, it's supposed to look like a done, it's, emerging um but i found that if you tie it in figure eight style first and then prop it up you get like a really cool uh like v look to the fly and and yeah don't be afraid to like figure eight around this a few times just make sure this 
isn't going to move around and, and twist on you because you, you want the wing to be really, really set. And I'm going to leave all this stuff long for now because I'm going to trim it all after I'm done at the end. Yes, the uh, Zilon and Emerger yarn tend to get a little soggy if you try to use them to float a fly. Um, they don't have like the, they're not as crinkly and fine as these materials are. So like the polypropylene and the trigger point are way better for dry flies. Um, they shed water really well and they'll, they'll hold on to just a gel floating forever. Like you, you can catch multiple fish sometimes without putting any floating on them. So right now, I'm trying to find the right size hackle. Um, don't have a hackle gauge. What I usually do is just work my way through. And if I find a piece of hackle that looks like a likely uh, size, I just wrap it around the hook like this and just see if it looks like it's the right length. And uh, also, this is this is a pale yellow half cape that I got. Um, basically, bought that just for sulfurs. Um, I just thought it was a cool color. You could definitely just use a light done uh, hackle as well. It wouldn't it wouldn't look wrong at all. Uh, saddle or cape would both work. I got the cape just so I get more sizes out of it. Um, so if you look at these, you look at the feathers at the top, really big. You know, some of these I could probably tie a size 12 with, and then the guys down here, if I needed to tie a size 20, I could probably do that. So saddles are great. Uh, you get a lot more feather, but not as many sizes. Where did I get the pale yellow cape? That is a whiting product. It was a whiting bronze. Different colors of hackle are hard to come by. The best thing to do is just call your fly shop. Uh, I'm not sure what we have in stock within the company, but we might have a light bar ginger or pale yellow light done you know you just we get orders uh you know probably once a month or so from whiting and uh the best thing to do is just be friendly with uh, the guys in your fly shop and just give them a call and when you get something good in just tell them to put it aside Yeah, I guess I got, I got lucky with this pale yellow one. But it was, their stuff is worth the wait because the whiting feathers are very good in my opinion. It's like the best dry fly hackle that I've used. All right. So while I was talking there, I was prepping this hackle. Pulling some of the, the stem off here. So a lot of times when I tie in hackle, I'll stand some of these up. You can see, let me make sure everybody can see this. There we go. So if you cut right down to the base of the stem, and tie that in, what you do is you leave these little barbs uh, hackle. Uh, and that gives your thread something to grip onto. If you just peel the hackle off, the stem is totally smooth. So you give it a few thread wraps 
and then you go to wrap your hackle and it slides right out. So I usually will just cut right to the base and then it gives my thread something to, to dig into. Cool. And then the other thing I'm gonna mention, I usually tie in hackle perpendicular to the hook. That way the first wrap I make I'm getting the stem to stick up straight. If you tie in like this, if you tie in lengthwise, your first wrap is facing backwards. So you get a little bit of hackle facing back and then it starts to twist around the hook. If that makes any sense. So I'll show you, basically it's the same thing. It's just like tying in a spinner wing. So I'm figurating around that stem. So my hackle is sticking straight up out of the stem. So the, the first wrap I make, it's already ready to wrap around the hook. Just make sure this is, oh, I was doing so well. Almost made it without breaking the thread. First time ever. Hackles there waiting, and we got our wing situated. And we should have the dubbing sitting here. That's the same sulfur yellow East Coast dubbing I used on the first fly. So I probably have inch and a half, inch and a half worth of uh, dubbing here. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get probably a few wraps behind the wing and then one or two in, in front of it. The idea is we get this like really cool two-tone effect to the fly. When the fish look at it from underneath, uh, just has that perfect look of like uh, sulfur done emerging from the from the nymph. So it's like dark brown back and then pale yellow front. Ever use CDC instead of hackle? Yes, you could definitely do that. Yeah, like the Henry Ramsey pattern uses CDC for the wing. Um, I've just been using the poly yarn. I feel like it's a little bit more durable. It floats just as well. Um, I've been pretty happy with it. Cool. So now I'm going to take my hackle. One, two. I could probably get, usually I get about two or three wraps behind the wing. And then if you pull the wing back, I can sneak one wrap in front like that before I tie it off. So there's a good amount of hackle on this fly that's going to keep it floating. Just carefully cut that stem off without cutting my thread. Build up a little bit of a head to this fly. Mm 
I know Brendan was waiting for me to break my thread. At this point, you can just whip finish. I usually do two whip finishes. I, I don't use glue very often on my flies. Um, streamers, yes. I'll, I'll use super glue or something on the, uh, the whip finish, but a lot of my dries and nymphs, I just do two, three or four turn whip finishes and call it a day. I usually don't have too many problems with it. So we'll cut that off. And then first thing I'm going to do is cut the tail. You know, you want the tail about the length of the body. I don't want it super long. Um, you know, you can see that's probably the length of that pheasant tail. So I trim that. And then I got this huge wing here. And even that, I could probably trim that a little bit more. So you still get this like v-shaped wing the other thing with this fly just because i want it to sit as low as possible in the water um what i'll usually do if you take these hackles pull as many of them well this guy i have the fly upside down so i'm pulling them down and then any of the ones that are still sticking straight up i'm just going to come in and trim these guys So this fly, it's still going to float really well. Um, you get all those poly yarn, there's still a ton of hackle on here. If you look, turn that sideways a little bit. Really wide profile to it. So there's still tons of flotation, but it's going to sit low in the water, which is what you want out of a, uh, a merger pattern like this. Any color variations on this fly that work? Uh, blue and olive, same thing. Um, you know, all the Western bugs you could do, you could do PMDs with this. Uh, yeah, I mean, any mayfly you can you can turn into a, a half and half. Um, you know, not every mayfly emerges on the surface. Some end up crawling out of the water, so. You know, uh, usually sulfurs and olives, that's at least for uh, Pennsylvania, that's the most common. Um, and I would imagine like olives and probably PMDs are the, the most common out west. Yes, Hendrickson's too. Totally blanked on that one. Um, Hendrickson's would be perfect. And if anybody has any other questions, I'm going to hang out and uh, see if I can answer them. Appreciate the views. And it is sulfur time in Pennsylvania, so we should have a couple of weeks to fish these. Golden Badger Hackle, yes, that would work just fine. Um, you know, like a light ginger would work too. Uh, sulfur's out in Maryland too. I bet they're on the gunpowder. Antron, I don't love Antron for trying to float patterns. Um, Antron's good for trailing shucks and nymphs, but it doesn't have a lot of, uh, like if you see like how crinkly this material is, Antron is a little bit more soggy. It doesn't hold float very well. It doesn't, it doesn't stick on the surface. Uh, ever put a tail on the Puff Daddy? No, the original pattern doesn't call for one, but you definitely could.
And if anybody wants to rewatch this, uh, we leave the live videos up on our channel. Um, you know, so if you missed something or wanted to rewatch it, it's going to be there. And if you have any questions, we're always around. Just give the shops a call. <laughs> Do I lick my materials like Kelly Gallup? I try not to because I don't want to get goofy. It's not good for you. <laughs> well, I appreciate everybody hanging out. So broy, Maddie Moo Johnson. Fun times. Not sure who's doing next week's live. Maybe we can peer pressure Brendan into doing it, or Sam Galt. <laughs> or Alex. Well, appreciate it, guys. Uh, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel. We're going to be doing these every week, so it's a fun time. Uh, yeah, any questions, feel free to uh, leave comments on the video. Hopefully, Brendan ties the game changer in the near future. <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys later. Have a good night.